The Unix operating system comes with quite detailed documentation and that documentation was historically not only available on paper but also from the command line. In fact, there is a type sy typesetting system that was developed by the original Unix authors called TROF that was used to typeset the manual and there is also a variant called NROF that provides a video terminal output version of the same documentation. The classical uh, Unix documentation uh, written in NROF TROF is uh, split into a number of volumes and knowing these volume numbers can be uh, quite uh, useful because there are uh, sections, so-called man pages, that may have the same name and uh, to unambiguously refer to a particular piece of documentation you can prefix uh, the command that you're looking for with the volume number. <clears throat> so uh, in volume one you find the user commands, the Unix tools that you can invoke from the command line. In volume two the system calls the kernel API. In volume three, the library functions, for example, standard C library functions such as printf. Volume four describes uh, devices, device drivers, and the interfaces that they present via the file system to the user. Volume five defines a number of file formats that are used in the operating system. And there are additional volumes. Volume six describes some Games Volume 8 describes some system administration tools and so on. So <clears throat> to read, for example, the man page of the uh, C library function printf, you just type man printf, but you may discover that there is also a printf command line tool, and therefore to get version uh, to get the library function printf, you can write man3 printf, whereas man1 printf will give you the documentation for the command line tool of the same name. Um, <clears throat> you will find that the Unix man pages have evolved a very clear structure. Um, they always start with a summary of the what the command do, does and Interestingly, they always end with a bug section where the authors try to be quite honest about what doesn't work yet, what are the limitations of the tool, what uh, they should have been doing, something that I wish some other bits of commercial software would also provide more honestly. Um, <clears throat> there exist versions of the MAN tool for example, Xman and a couple of others that provide a graphical user interface equivalent. In those, you can then also find a table of contents, a list of all the man pages, so you can discover tools. Unfortunately, the TROF NROF input syntax is a little bit arcane and um, not universally popular and better typesetting systems and uh, text formats have come along uh, later, most notably uh, LaTeX and HTML. And therefore, there have been a couple of other attempts to provide alternative uh, documentation systems. Um, for example, the GNU project uh, designed a system called uh, TechInfo, uh, where a version of LaTeX is used as the uh, documentation format and the TechInfo system compiles LaTeX into a hypertext format that is an effort that predates the invention of HTML. And today still many of the GNU tools, if you find that want to read the documentation, you will find that they come only with a very tears man page in the original uh, man format and if you want to read the full manual you instead have to use the info tool. The info tool uh, has a user interface very similar to the 
Emacs editor. In fact, you can invoke info from uh, not only from the shell, but also with Control H I within Emacs. And <clears throat> then you see a selection menu where you position the cursor on the name of the command that interests you. And there you can press uh, Enter or the M key to select a topic and follow that hyperlink. But unlike many uh, web pages, um, it's not just a, a graph of hyperlinks. It's also it has an inherent tree structure. So there is a linear way of uh, reading the info documentation and the keys N for next, uh, P for previous up and directory allow you to navigate that document tree. So if you just press space, you get a, a depth first traversal of the uh, document tree and uh, with up you can go to, for example, the parent section of directory, you come back to the table of contents. Um, <clears throat> other authors use HTML or PDF or other documentation formats. And in Linux uh, distributions, it has become customary for any package to place the associated documentation in the folder user share docs. So if you are looking for some documentation and can't find it via info or man, that may be a place to look. Many other packages have their documentation on the web these days. To find documentation, you of course first need to know what a tool that you might be looking for is called. And uh, I've collected here uh, what I think are sort of the most essential tools um, that if you become a experienced uh, Unix Linux user, you will eventually uh, run into and become familiar with. Um, this is not necessarily an exhaustive list. It's uh, not everything we cover in this course and um, it covers a couple of additional things that we don't uh, cover in this course. But if you have a look through this list, I hope you will recognize a couple of uh, names and when you need the relevant tool, then know how to find the documentation. So I mentioned here, for example, tools for <clears throat> looking up uh, documentation. Then a very common tool is a, a plain text viewer. Unix came with a tool called more where you just provide more in the file name or you pipe something into standard input of more. And then it just after it has output a screen full of the file, it asks for a key press uh, to allow you to see more the next page. And then someone wrote a more full featured version that allows you to scroll up and down like in an editor, in a read only editor. And um, they called this program less as in less is the opposite of more. If you search something in directories there, I mentioned already the ls command will also talk about a find command that can recursively traverse directory structures. ls also has an option minus r to output an entire file tree. Um, I mentioned already tools for moving, but also copying, removing. Touch is a tool that updates the time of a file. So if you want to change the last modified date and time associated with a file, uh, which can sometimes be useful in uh, when used with other tools like make that pay attention to timestamps, then you can update the time with touch. Touch is also useful if you just want to create an empty file because if the file doesn't exist, then touch will create it. LN, the link command, creates a reference to another file. So you can um, make a file appear in a second location under a second name in a second directory by creating a link. And there's two types of link, hard links that are limited to the same file system and symbolic links that are more visible that show you where the file is actually located and that can 
uh, trans transcend uh, different file systems. Um, <clears throat> we're going to talk about a couple of tools, very simple text manipulation tools for concatenating files, for copying binary files, for showing just the start or the end of a file, uh, for examining, there's also tools for examining uh, disk space, uh, how much uh, memory does, how much disk space does a subdirectory use. You can see with the disk utilization tool how much disk space is still free. You can see with disk free in some <clears throat> multi-user file servers you may have a quota mechanism that limits the amount of disk space that a single user can occupy and you can uh, uh, query that quota with either quota if it's locally enforced or R quota if it's a property of a networking server. If you want to find out what's going on inside your system, you can list with PS the process descriptor table, which gives you a list of all the processes running on the system. Uh, and there's a number of options whether to show only your own processes or everyone's processes. Top is another process viewing tool that sorts uh, processes by how much uh, CPU they have recently uh, consumed. So if your machine is busy, if the fans are spinning up and you don't know what's going on, then top is a good way to check. Um, there's also a tool free to check how much RAM you have and how much of that is still unused at the moment. Uh, uptime is a tool that shows you when the system was last booted, but it also includes a load summary. Uh, <clears throat> it gives you a smoothed version of what has the recent average uh, load CPU utilization been. And W on multi-user system shows you who else is currently logged in. It's a number of editors. VI and Emacs are sort of the two classics and they are a bit like churches. Uh, people normally stick with the one they became familiar with first. Um, VI is somewhat unusual in how it's being used because you continuously switch between uh, two modes. So you have an editing mode where if you press a letter then that letter gets inserted but then you can press the escape key and you go into the command mode where each letter now uh, has a function. For example, uh, O means uh, insert uh, in the line below, or a capital G means uh, jump to the end of the file, or two uppercase Z means save and leave the editor. Uh, so this has quite a learn steep learning curve until you can memorize all these commands. But once you do, uh, it's an extremely uh, efficient editor because you can, with a very small number of keystrokes, do very powerful editing operation. Emacs likewise is a very uh, comprehensive editor. It has a built-in Lisp interpreter. There's an entire ecosystem of extensions around this, whereas Nano is a very basic and simple editor. We're going to talk about compilers and uh, project build tools and uh, tools for comparing files, for extracting the differences of files, applying these extracted differences to other files so you can form a little algebra of file differences and do almost calculations with these. We're going to talk about version control systems, uh, databases that allow you to keep track of the revision history of either individual files or uh, entire directory trees. Um, <clears throat> there's a number of scripting languages that have involved that are more powerful than what the shell can do in particular that have very powerful text processing uh, functionality. Uh, Org and Perl are in that category. Uh, Python, I'm sure you've heard, but other languages that have found some use in the Unix tools world is Tickle, the tool command language, and uh, Ruby, which is sort of inspired by uh, Perl, but does a couple of things different. There are macro processors, which 
are languages that read a file, find particular codes inside a file that are then expanded. The so-called stream editors that uh, modify um, streams of text uh, as they pass uh, through the program, um, tools for sorting, searching lines. Uh, I mentioned already NROF, TROF, the text formatters in which the original documentation of Unix was written and uh, somewhat more popular these days, the tech and LaTeX, which are widely used uh, for scientific typesetting. Also some open source software is typeset uh, using these and there will be in the at the start of part 1b uh, an introduction lecture to LaTeX. There's a mail command line tool that allows you to send email if it has been configured correctly for your mail server. <clears throat> There's a whole range of networking tools, just a couple of which we're going to talk about. Uh, likewise, tools for uh, packaging files, uh, entire directory trees into single files and compressing them. Uh, we're going to look at a number of built-in shell commands to change the state of your shell session to control other programs. If you want to look up the current date and time, there's a date command. There's also numerous clocks available. Sometimes it's useful to be able to periodically start a program if you, uh, for example, want to clean up something or perform a backup at three in the morning every day, then there is a cron system in Unix and crontab is a command line tool to edit the schedule of processes that this cron system starts. Um, this command for locating where a command is, if you type which ls, for example, it will tell you slash bin slash ls. Um, so you can find where the binary is actually located that executes uh, when you type its name in. Um, <clears throat> some very simple but useful tools is clear just to empty the screen of your terminal emulator. And sometimes your terminal emulator may get into a strange uh, state if it has received some escape sequences that, for example, change from ASCII to another a character set, then you can run the reset command and it will set a couple of escape sequences to your terminal emulator to reset it into its default state. Um, you can also configure the terminal interface uh, with the STTY command. This can be useful in scripts, for example, if you want to switch terminal echo on and off, if you want to uh, be able to type in a password, you want to switch off echo such that the password isn't shown on the screen. Uh, there's numerous tools for dealing with computer graphics. Uh, Ghost View is a postscript uh, or PDF viewer. Ocular is another quite popular PDF uh, viewer that's available on Linux. Uh, Display comes with a toolkit called Image Magic and uh, allows you to view a wide range of uh, graphics file formats. There's graphics drawing tools available. We're going to talk about XFIC in particular in the LaTeX lecture uh, next year, but also um, TGIF, GIMP and Inkscape. I just mentioned by name. These are uh, different pixel and vector graphics editors. There's a a package of command line tools for converting bitmap files into each all other called NetPBM, uh, which is a large number of individual programs called something to PNM and PNM to something, where something can be TIFF, GIF, JPEG, and any uh, number of other file formats. And these you can often use in pipelines to uh, convert uh, the graphics format that you want to have into the um, graphics format that you have received as the output of some tool. 
There's a little command line calculator built into Unix called BC. People usually started with BC minus L to have arbitrary precision arithmetic because by default it just supports integer arithmetic. And there's some security tools like changing your password or changing the file permissions and various uh, programming tools. For example, if you program a C program that has to parse a complicated syntax, then there are scanner and parser generators known as Lex and Yak or their GNU uh, equivalents called Flex and Bison available. 